Welcome to this last part of the uh, testing and quality assurance module. Uh, and so far we have mainly uh, been talking about the development uh, or in I called it implementation testing. So the kind of testing that happens during development usually done by developers, uh, unit system and integration testing and then in the book uh, by Somerville there's also the talk about something that is called release testing. So this is really the process where we check whether the system is ready for release, it's fulfilling the requirements, so it has uh, quite some focus on validation testing. Uh, what we often have are terms like a factory acceptance test or generally an acceptance test um, and that's the process of uh, letting the user, the client or other stakeholders test the system and figure out whether they can accept it or not. And the factory here simply means that it's actually in the real environment. So there's quite a difference whether you would invite the client over, they use the system, or it's in the real environment. For example, think about a system that is used in a hospital, in healthcare. Uh, if you invite a nurse over to test your system, uh, or the nurse uses it in a hospital, there's a completely different level of stress or other things going on. So this can heavily influence, for example, the user experience or the usability of the system. Uh, so this is something that is typically under the umbrella of uh, acceptance testing. And very often the system here is tested as a black box, black box testing. So the system is running you see the outside, you see the user interface, you see the command line interface, whatever you have, uh, but you're not looking at the internals. You're not looking at code statements, you're not looking at uh, interaction between components. It's really just a box, basically. So that's, for example, uh, compare looking at a car from the outside where everything is fine, whether it starts versus opening it up and actually looking at the individual components, whether they look okay. So that's what we usually do in the acceptance test setting. Uh, so that's release testing. Now, to wrap this up, uh, this has somewhat, this of course comes from the waterfall, the V model, the idea that we develop, we implement it somehow, and then it's being tested and then it's released, and then we have an acceptance test. The system is accepted, the client runs it. Uh, now, this has changed dramatically with agile development, uh, and also more recently with something that we call DevOps or development operations. We'll cover this more later. Uh, but one of the big issues with the old waterfall development is that the customer would basically come in in the beginning to tell you what they would like to have, what they need, uh, and they would come at the very end to check whether it's okay. Uh, and, in, and more often than not, it was not okay because well, things changed, requirements changed, you forgot about something, you uh, understood something else under the way and so on. So this was usually an issue which Agile development addressed by saying we would like to have acceptance testing at every sprint. So what happens, for example, in Scrum is that after each two to four weeks in the process, in the official process, the uh, customer representative should be doing an acceptance test. So after two to four weeks, the customer representative says, uh, whatever you implement in a sprint is acceptable or not. There is an actual demo, an actual acceptance test. It might not be a factory, it might not be in the actual environment, but at least it's with a real customer or at least a customer representative. So this is something that uh, of course has changed. So I would say the border between development and release testing is getting more and more blurry, which is also why I, uh, in this module, quite often talk a bit about both. Uh, and similarly, what is getting more and more uh, common here is to look at the operation side. Because if you look at this, this is all about the development. We develop something, we test it, uh, we check, we release it, and then it's operated. Then it's running, everything is good. But Nowadays, of course, you know uh, from companies like companies that are famous for this, maybe there are a lot of companies do this, but like Netflix, Facebook, uh, and of course all the other big ones, Google, Microsoft, uh, they actually run a lot of tests also during operations. So it's not just release and you're done, but you actually check what is happening uh, during 
operations. And just to give an example, Netflix uh, published something that is known as the Simeon Army, which is a different kind of monkeys, basically. Uh, and that's a system that does messes with the running with the productive Netflix system uh, and sees what happens in order to find defects, in order to find out whether the system is running as expected. For example, in the most extreme case, uh, they have a component that randomly takes parts of Netflix and just crashes them. It takes down a component, uh, it switches it off, and it sees how does the system react. Uh, and of course the aim is to, to see is our uh, resilience essentially, is it good enough? Does the system react uh, by, for example, distributing the load differently and the users don't really realize it? Uh, or if it's maybe an extreme crash, several components go down at the same time, then, well, it, goes, it gets a bit slower for the users, but it's not extremely noticeable. So they do these things at the runtime. Uh, and of course they need to collect a lot of data, a lot of input from users, uh, but they use that essentially to see are we having any undesired properties in our system, are there any bugs we don't know of, uh, but it has nothing to do with development release, it's during the operation. So more and more we actually also have something that I would call maybe operation testing, which is not covered uh, in the Summerworld book, but it's more and more common. Uh, there are also things which we'll cover later that are called, for example, A-B testing, uh, that you roll out different functionality to different users, and they're also somewhat related to that. Okay, so overall, uh, this concludes the module on, on testing, on quality assurance. Remember, we talked both about inspection, the static analysis, uh, the static processing of, uh, of different implementation artifacts or design artifacts. Uh, and we talked about testing where you actually execute something. And remember, it's not, not one thing fixes everything, but you actually need a combination. You need reviews, you need inspections, you need tests, and you need tests at very different levels. During development, before the release, during operation, but also at different levels of your code, at unit level, at integration level, and at system level. Thanks for listening, and see you in the next module.